Welcome everyone to another episode of Coffee and Tea. Welcome. Talking art with Markeens. Cheers. <laughs> My name is Maria and you are currently in Mark's studio slash war zones war room. slash <laughs> <laughs> disaster. Disaster, working disaster. We go from chaos to order and back again. And back um, in the midst of filming the language of drawing workshop. So yes, things are constantly shifting, filling up and yeah. um, it's just like the drawing. It's adding and <laughs> subtracting. <laughs> But here is why uh, we felt the, um, let's say, the need uh, or the impulse desire. desire to film this little episode. Because <clears throat> recently, um, it popped up on my social media, an ad from a guy who was in a very cheerful, che cheerful and cheerful, uh, is that a word? Cheer cheerful? Chirpy. Chirpy, Chirpy voice uh, saying... It's not difficult to learn piano. You can learn to pay, play piano in two weeks or three weeks or whatever it was. And as someone who learned piano for four years, I can tell you that it's nothing easy. <laughs> and you cannot learn it really in two to three weeks with the, an online course. If you took his lesson, you would. <laughs> Maybe I should, just to prove my point. But yeah. be that as it may, be that as it, it may. really tickled me. It yeah. tickled me uh, because we are filming this course where we are promising blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> kind of. Pretty much. Well, we're promising. We're, what we're, it's what we're not promising Yeah. that matters here. Talk to us a little bit. It, it, it has to do more <laughs> with what we're not promising. And I don't want this to be a video about the course itself. Right. This is a video about this, this greater idea. subject of uh, instant gratification right. and achieving um, skills quickly somehow. So that's yes. what we want to really talk about uh, here. But yes, if you want to touch on the course, I mean, obviously you can. No, I, I like this greater subject because it, it's it's near and dear to me and to us. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's begin with the the term discipline. Mm -hmm. It's it's no surprise that all in all of the arts, music, dance, literature, the visual arts, theater, they call it the disciplines, right? Because it is a discipline. And yeah. let's just begin with that. Mm -hmm. And then I cannot help but think one of my favorite quotes, Maria, is from Rico Lebrun. He was my mentor's mentor. Howard Warshaw was my mentor. Rico Lebrun, wonderful artist, and he said, and I know this quote verbatim. He said that in teaching, we fail to sponsor passion as a discipline. Hmm. Instead, we offer up the deadly diagram, supposedly to be fertilized later by experience, but later is too late. Totally. And what he meant by the deadly diagram, to be clear, is the formulaic way of working. Yeah. You know, here's a formula, follow it, and you'll be an artist. Yeah. And I've never been taught that way, and I've never taught that way. Um, and if I can continue just for a moment, um, it took me to my library where I have probably one of the very first books that I began to use as a student as a teenager, The Natural Way to Draw by Nicolaides. Mm -hmm. And because we're working on this course, uh, The Language of Drawing, it's taken me back to this. And he's a marvelous teacher in what he has to say and, and offer. So uh, if you'll indulge me for just a, a, a few moments here, I just want to do a couple of quotes on this note. Yeah. Right here in the introduction, he says, um, there's only one way to learn to draw and that's the perfectly natural way. And it has nothing to do with artifice or technique. Mm. Um, it has nothing to do with uh, aesthetics or conception. It has to do with the act of correct observation. And then he goes on about the teacher. He says, the job of the teacher, as I see it, is to teach students not how to draw, but how to learn to draw. Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting distinction. Yeah. They must acquire, they being the students, uh, some real method of finding out facts for themselves, lest they be limited for the rest of their lives to the facts that the instructor relates. Mm -hmm. They must discover something of the true nature of the artist, of the artistic creation, the hidden processes by which inspiration works, 
those hidden processes are best found out by the individual. Yes. And, I agree and they are them. very individual in their nature. Yes. Because they come much. from us, from our experiences, from our life, from our capabilities, all of it. I learned, I had, was really lucky, Maria. I had really great teachers right at the get go, right out of high school, because I entered college at age 18. Um, but the majority of what I've learned has always been on my own. Always. Mm. Uh, and I say this to all the artists I work with and all the students at CCA that I work with. It's, it's really, um, you, can, you can teach technique, you can teach concepts, you can teach strategies, but I also explain to them that probably the most important ingredients I cannot teach, uh, desire yeah. being most critical one. Um, curiosity. Curiosity being a huge one. I can't teach curiosity, mm -hmm. but without that, where are you? Mm -hmm. And so these are inside what I call inside jobs. Yeah. You know, that's an inside job. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's what I uh, am saddened by because sometimes uh, students will come to you and ask you a very mm -hmm. specific question saying, well, I was told by such and such that yes. this is not good or right. that I should be doing this. And no. somehow it always felt like some doors were closed for them because mm -hmm a teacher decided that this is not good and it might not work for him or her but no. it doesn't mean that it shouldn't work for the student right and you yes. say yourself there are all these rules but artists are there to break the rules to bend and break always <laughs> yeah and you know that i also say to to people look the only absolute in art and in the teaching of art is that there are no absolutes right there are lots of guidelines lots of rules of thumb lots of guiding principles mm -hmm. um, and so on. And they are there for a reason. And that's right. true in all the arts. Um, but as history proves, many great artists of all stripes figured out how to bend those rules, how to break those rules, how to establish new rules, how to, how to push the envelope, as we say. Mm -hmm. you know, and that, that takes personal discovery. Um, also, I just want to add, Maria, that the other aspect to what we're proposing for artists with the language of, uh, excuse me, the language of drawing is that um, it does take time and it's, it's really about baby steps for absolute beginners mm -hmm. and to accept the fact that there is going to be numerous times and moments where things don't go well. And that's also something that we wanted to touch on here and I'm going to go back if you don't mind to Nicolaides once more sure. because he also discusses this idea of what is it to accept failure right. as an integral part of the process uh, and still be okay with it and right. still have the the will the determination mm -hmm. the perseverance to continue to practice and before you read it, it yes. I, I, I hear that as again in these uh, promising courses, it's like success is like a linear thing, right? Mm. You follow step one to 12 or one to three or one to five. Usually it's like three to five steps. All the courses, like if you take these three steps, you're going to succeed. And it's like this thing is like just a trajectory and yeah. just follow the yellow brick road and you will get there. But yeah. it's not like that. No, it, it cannot no. be like that. So it no. pains me, uh, these promises that are offered and people maybe get excited rather of than, uh, you know, being discouraged, which is valid. But yeah, they might be discouraged and disappointed later on when they figure out that, oh, I really tried to follow these steps and yet success eludes me. Yes. And the uh, problem here, too, Maria, is that once they falter, mm -hmm. misstep, mistake, failure, uh, the, the problem oftentimes is they begin to really doubt themselves. Yes. I don't have what it takes. Yes. This is not, not for enough. me. I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'll never be as good as so-and-so. It's not worth mm -hmm. my effort. And, and that's where desire comes in. And again, without that desire, people will quit. And so be it. They'll go on and do other things. And there's nothing wrong with that. But it takes um, a, a real desire to say, I am going to persevere. I am going to mm -hmm. figure this out. And I am willing to uh, understand and accept my missteps and my mistakes. Right. Uh, Agnes Martin famously said that the so-called missteps are just the next step to the next thing. I mm. absolutely love that because right. it's so true. 
and then the teacher's role there to support people yes. while experiencing these moments or challenges and meeting the person where the person is and making progress because i know how excited you get about a student of yours that you know doesn't draw as well as another student but what you appreciate is the effort and the progress that the student makes it doesn't matter if it matches how well or brilliantly someone else does it we're not all michelangelo right. but the point is that effort and that trajectory and that um development that you can that you can sense in the student so yeah and it's true and once really, they have a breakthrough moment yes and no matter wonderful. how small it is it could be a small breakthrough yes. and i'll say hey <laughs> there you are you're at a new That's point now you, you know now you have a new bar that you have mm. set and it's very exciting to be part of and to watch yeah. um well here's nicolati's on this very subject um he says don't worry if for the first three months, your studies do not look like anything else called a drawing that you've ever seen. Again, this is pre, you know, you want a preconception about what, how it's gonna work. Mm. You should not care what your work looks like as long as you spend your time trying. Now that's a hard sell, right mm. there. Exactly. That exactly. is a very hard sell to not care. Of course you're going to want of to course. care and of course you're gonna be disappointed, but he says the main thing is to keep trying. The effort you make is not for one particular drawing, but for the experience that you're having. And that will be true even when you're 80 years old. Now, I like what he says here next. He goes, I believe that entirely too much emphasis is placed on the paintings and drawings that are made in art schools, particularly now. This was many years ago, decades. Yeah. He says, if you go to a singing teacher, he or she will give you breathing exercises, not a song. And neither should you be expected to show off pictures as a result of your first exercises in drawing. Mm -hmm. Finally, he says this. Unfortunately, most students, whether through their own fault or the fault of their instructors, seems to be, they seem to be dreadfully afraid of making technical mistakes. Yeah. This is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And you should understand that these mistakes are unavoidable. And finally, he sums it up by saying the sooner you make your first 5,000 mistakes, the sooner you'll be able to correct them. Yeah. Well, that's hard. That's a hard sell too. And that's what we're trying to do. We're, <laughs> we're selling. <laughs> we're selling 5,000 mistakes before you right. learn how to correct them. But no, you don't have to make 5,000. But he, the point is there. Yeah. The point is Start you, with 50. you have to get... <laughs> No, I, uh, let me share a brief uh, memory, a brief memory. Years ago, not that, not that long ago, I was heading towards the BART station where we have our subway system. And there um, was a guy who had brought a piano and he was playing for the public there at the station. So he was out in a little plaza. He was good, but here's what's interesting, Maria. He was working on a piece by Beethoven. That's difficult. And he was sort of performing for the public. Mm. He got to a point where the passage was difficult mm -hmm. and he kept screwing up. Mm -hmm. He never made a face. He never indicated that he was frustrated. He tried that passage at least three or four times. Mm -hmm. So even though he was performing, so to speak, so to speak with yeah. his hat out there, he was interested in solving that problem, mm -hmm. that passage that was difficult for him. And I loved watching this. Yeah. He didn't keep going, even though he made a mistake. He wanted... He probably didn't take that course. <laughs> <laughs> he probably didn't take the course. He just wanted to solve the problem. And that's what we're doing here. We're solving problems. I love that. No, he didn't take that course. Had he didn't he, take the right course. He would have just sailed right through. Absolutely. <laughs> so. So there it is. Uh, we just wanted to touch a little bit on that. And we will obviously talk much more about this as we get closer to launch the course, uh, what the course is about and what the course isn't about, but what it's definitely not about, it's about a three, five, seven, 12 steps program to a successful, masterful, uh, skillful artist or draftsman, right? Right, right. Okay. You are where you are. You're always yeah. where you are. And that's important to understand. We hope this helps and reassures you at least a little bit, no matter what type of art you're making. Uh, if you're in any course right now, being Mark's course or any other courses out there, just make it your own. Always try to make it your own. Yes. Become okay. your own teacher. 
understand that this is a, a lifelong pursuit. If mm. you really love this, if you really enjoy it, um, it's a lifelong pursuit as yeah. anything worthwhile is doing. That's our uh, message ten, for the day. 10 cents wisdom yeah, <laughs> for today. Our two cents worth. See you soon. Ciao.